Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's September 10th, 2014, and um, I call tonight's show YouthVoices.net Can Reconnect, Youth Voices Reconnect. So um, not that we haven't connected, but um, as we're getting busy here into the fall, we want to figure out how to stay connected, find lots of ways to connect, and use all the tools we've been talking about and curriculum we've been talking about over the past few weeks and uh, get going. Sam, is that any better? Can you hear us yet? Sam Reed is joining us from Philadelphia. So far he can't hear us, but so we may have to ask him questions. And, um, we'll figure that out as we go. Chris Sloan is with us. Chris um, helped start the site, uh, Youth Voices, good uh, 11 years ago or so, Chris. Um, mm -hmm. And um, Don Reed is with us uh, from Michigan. Uh, welcome, Don. Thank you. Don is teaching ninth grade and eleventh uh, or no? I don't know. Yeah, it's American lit. It's mostly eleven. Okay. I have some sophomores in the, in there too. Cool. And Joe Paricio um, is with us as well, and Joe is teaching at least again, maybe in eleventh grade. Is that right? I have twelfth uh, grade. 12th grade. Just twelfth grade. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. Here's here's what I want to um, ask you all to keep us to. Um, let's really make this a planning session. Um, we've been talking a lot around stuff for. Or, I mean, not you know. I'm, I'm not putting it down. Though. It's really important. But um, so every 20 minutes, let's say, okay, what's the action plan? Um, or every 15 minutes. All right. So uh, so why don't you reintroduce yourselves and I thought that just to have one question to ask you what do you want to get out of this hour what do you want to make sure happens um, as the f three or four or five of us uh, get together here um, and Chris do you want to start with that sure um, um, so what <laughs> I would like to get out of this is um, since we've got someone from New York City and someone from Michigan, someone from California, someone from Utah, and someone from Philadelphia. We've got a pretty good geographic mix of the U.S. So um, I think it would just be interesting if we can get our students um, in the same space uh, in roughly asynchronously speaking, at, at least in the same time, uh, same space, same time with the constraints of, you know, like not literally maybe right at the same time, but uh, at the same arc of the assignment. So like if my students are just coming up with their inquiry topics, that maybe the other students might also be in that same space. Uh, and then, you know, when mine are a little bit more down the road that, you know, we, we're still connecting down the road, so um, right. I guess. That so would part be... of it, part of it is defining what down the road means for each of us, right? Um, so True. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I should just stay in the beginning. Um, yeah. Just so I guess I'll get it a little more modest. So we could no, all be starting um, roughly at the same time, knowing that time. Well, I won't get into the meaning of time. <laughs> so I'll stop there. Cool. Don, what are you thinking? And thank okay. you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, too, am interested in figuring out how we can connect. I am hoping to get my students on Youth Voices next week. So I'm introducing, I'm just introducing it to them. So I am, at some point, I need to talk to someone about just a couple management issues, but then I, I'm with Chris and thinking about how we can connect, but also how we can foster more either either really heavily encourage or foster some authentic conversations along the way, even like with assignments, but with some of the authentic things that happen along the way that we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, like Ferguson conversations and the great work Chris is doing and so I have lots of goals. <laughs> Those are good. Yeah. Cool. We'll go. Joe, any thoughts? Um, yeah, hella thoughts. So my mic is not bad. It's just I'm, hell I'm hella sick, super sick. So I just sound my sexy voice. Um, <laughs> Thank you for joining us, even sick. 
Thank you. Um, I also, like Don, I have a couple of practical questions, even though I've been on Youth Voices. Just because we, uh, in the last three years, the kids started commenting. Um, and so this is my new batch. We haven't had it for a year. This is all fresh, and they're awesome. And so we started with commenting. Anyway, so that's what we've been doing for the last few days. Um, and then my question is kind of along the same vein as Chris's about being in the same space, um, the same arcs in, in terms of like maybe not the same place in the research process, but the same skill set or the same, same thinking that's required. I don't know. Um, but I really would like to see if we can start to figure out how to do the hangouts on air with the kids as an extension of what we're doing on the blog. That's where I'm at. And that's practical stuff too. Just can we coordinate something on it? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Just figuring yeah. out time okay. zones. So yeah, let's. One of the yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, Chris, can you ask Sam to jump in there? Whoops, he's uh, figuring oh. it out. Okay. I think he's trying to join us again. Yeah, that's cool. So um, some of my goals. Um, so I would love. I I want to see us make connections around text. Um, so that's one goal. So I'd like to see if we can play with now comment or um, and or we talked about genius last week, um, so that um, we're finding each other and kind of annotating even before we get to youth voices. And but I don't know how practical that is. So that's 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 one idea that I'd like to pursue. Um, and um, like some of you, or like Joe especially said, uh, working on a hangout on air together would be great. Um, and uh, go ahead. <laughs> Sam, can you talk? I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, so if Sam jumps in, we'll just get quiet. <laughs> see what happens. Okay. All right, so so um, I, I did see some nodding of heads, but I think it's hard. Um, so, Chris, can you... Um, so one of the things that your students have published so far correct me if I'm wrong, and, and identify the students if you can, is that they've been publishing, they can, it seems like they come up with a question in Google anywhere and find something and then say what they found and why they're interested in that topic, and then mm -hmm. they comment on each other's things, and it looks like you've uh, reopened Out of Eden Walk as well. Is that right? So yeah. is that what you've done so far? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so far uh, I have different and classes doing um, different things. So with my English students who are seniors, um, they're in an AP English language class. Um, they, um, yeah, it started with just, you know, the 10 questions thing, which is wonderful. I mean, just that discussion alone is, is great in the class, the kind of things they're interested in. Um, and just about, you know, keeping that wide open and... and um, and just trying to, I liken it to love. I said, you know, um, you don't want to choose, I say, you don't want to choose a human or a topic that you're not interested in. And so what you've got to do is, you know, like you've got to uh, love your topic. You've got to go out on a date with your topic and uh, things have to click. And if they don't, you know, you dump your topic. And so they can relate to that. And, um, so then it's like, okay, let's, um, in one period, I gave them a really short time frame. I said, okay, you've got your question now. And in the next, really, it was like 20 minutes of searching. I said, go to where you first would look for information about this question. And then um, read it and then try to cite something from that source. So they did a quick power read and then linked to that source. Um, and found an image that also represents um, their think, or an image that, uh, I forget how I worded it, but, you know, like an image that supports that same uh, uh -huh. idea. When you, say, when you say cite 
they're not. Some of them are quoting, and others aren't. Is that right? Right. I talk to them. You know, right now it's like, how do you cite sources? Do you cite sources online? So, some of them um, just copy a URL and drop it in there. Some of them um, did like an, very few of them, but some did an inline link, which um, isn't that intuitive on the interface because you've got to change the um, format options. But um, or you learn how to do an inline link. Which is good learning. Well, you mean like code it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah true. Um, I I um, I didn't ahead. really think of that actually, but mm. yeah. So I could do that. Uh, but anyway, right now it's all about. Yeah, I'm like, just to say that those options are like that on purpose, like that. So yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know there's uh, good reasons for them. Um, well, I th well I don't there are reasons. I don't know if they're good. But go yeah. ahead. <laughs> um, but uh, so then I also had them out their search process. So in the next coming weeks, it's all about like doing those initial inquiries, and then also starting to talk about how we find information. Um, is that's kind of where that particular sequence is. So just to identify, and I think I want to see if Don and Joe, I mean, I can certainly do this. Um, the, it seems, it's like you, you said you do that, right? So um, mute that clicking one second, and then you won't. No, that's not good. <laughs> Sam, can you hear us? Because we can hear you clicking. Can you talk, Sam? Try to talk. Hello? <laughs> it's not trying. We can hear him clicking, can't we? Well, so maybe he's okay. Oh, he can't hear us. That's the problem. I keep forgetting. Sorry. Let's get back to the point here. Um, the point was. So what I what I want to ask is, do you think you could um, rush into the process? Like you haven't taught them how to cite. You haven't taught them how to, you know, do good research yet. You haven't taught them all that. You've just said, okay, what what can you do right now? Um, put up anything, and and you're. And I want to say that we want to be satisfied with that, right? And because what it does is it allows all of us to kind of see what each of us are, what the kids are, are their topics are, right? I can hear Sam, I think. I know. Problem oh, is he can't um, hear us. So what I, <laughs> I, mean, I keep right. forgetting that, too. <laughs> what I <laughs> would um, add to that is I also, with their first comment today, mm -hmm. I said, said to them, I gave them no other instruction than to write a comment that they think that writer would be helpful, that that writer would find helpful. So I said, I'm not even going to define what uh, like a helpful comment is. I'm just saying, you all go for it and just see what comes out. Uh, and then we'll talk about, you know, like what's good comments and that kind of thing instead of me laying down what I think my definition of good comments is. Because really, you know, organically they'll come out with that same definition. Mm -hmm. So, Joe and Don, could that fit what you're doing? I mean, I, I could certainly rush my kids to that. But... So, I guess Chris is like a week ahead of where I'm yeah. at. Um, and I just like where they're, what they're going to be doing next. So, tomorrow they're supposed to be posting their uh, senior project topics with the list of their brainstorm of questions. And then I was thinking about how I was supposed to do part of their first process journal, Chris, is what you just did with your kids. Is when I say search, like search for something, and I gave them four four different types of sources they had to get. But and then they're just summarizing them. And then I was hoping that they could kind of like post that with what their questions are right now about their topic because right they're grappling with they're in that whole brainstorming piece of figuring out what they're going to be researching for the whole year. So they have to like the 19th, so on a practical level, they have till the 19th to turn in this process journal. I can send everyone a link if that helps. Um, yeah. But, um, all right, doing that. So um, the process, where does that process journal end up though? The process journal is, it's a document that they have in their senior project research folders that they made mm -hmm. a copy of for my master. And then so we just... Uh -huh. Could they could they put that on Youth Voices? Yeah, they could. That's what I'm. I'm just trying to figure out. 
Mm-hmm. So like Chris, we, I think we saw some of your kids' postings because my kids are commenting on. I guess some of them are yours. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly, and then, uh, but I saw that, and like they were posting like uh, links to articles, and then how they felt about it. Um, so I'm trying to just see what an idea for what my kids can do where they can publish because they're just learning about like they're not the kids I looped with so this conversation about going public with your work and having an authentic audience and all of that I have to cram that (coughs) into two weeks these last two weeks you know and just really pushing that but showing them examples from the past few years of what our students did before which has been so awesome Um, but that coupled with they're learning how to comment they're learning how the just the interface works um, and some of them were on it last year but half of them were but it's but that helps because they can teach each other right they can teach each other. oh it's, it's yeah. been a blessing so that's where I'm at right now and I guess I guess my lesson plan for design for tonight is to figure out when they go on tomorrow how are they posting these pieces of their process journal already because many of them have diligent. It's been awesome that they that they've already found multiple sources: an academic source, a website. We had one that had to be a film audio image, and one that had to be uh, crap. Oh, a news article. You know, so four different types, and then they would just teach them tomorrow is how to hyperlink that, and then post it. I like that idea because um, you know you're just saying like find a news article. But you're not saying, you know, go to the Chronicle. Yeah, we to that conversation about where do we go for information yet, which, again, that's like, that's next week. Well, so, TMZ seems like a good source. For oh, that. yeah, TMZ is so reliable. <laughs> I would go there for all kinds of stuff. Sorry. Right? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, Chris, Don, I, and Sam, like, that's where, and Paul, I like, how do I get it so that when my kids post, they're going to get that, like, the commenting back, right? And um, but this idea that I wanted to show them some of Utah's like what they're doing because as examples of what. So let me let me pose the problem and then Don jump in here. So the problem I'm hearing is that your assignment is really cool, the four sources, but it takes longer than Chris's assignment. Chris does it in one period, right? And what that does, I think it takes a little longer. The four sources, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Well, some of them did it and they found they located. They just haven't done. The added additional piece is the 50-word summary of each one. Um, but that's, they've already found them. It took them mm-hmm. another, like, about maybe two hours because it was a block period and a workshop, a lab period. So it took them not that long to find things. As, and then it took me more one-on-one talking about what an academic source was, the academic source. And that was, again, pointing to links to what that means. But they were pretty adept when we were like, okay, some possible news or article databases. Here you go. There's your news article. They were tapping Google Images to find and Google Video to find their stuff for the film, the multimedia source. So they were pretty fit quick, but mm-hmm. I'm not saying that the sources were great at all. No. Right. So. But Chris, sorry, and you, you pick up Chris, but you you do almost the same thing, right? I mean, but but it but slower, don't you? <laughs> um, like your kids find different kinds of sources each week. Yeah, that's later when we do, when we finally kind of lock into a research uh, topic, um, they, um, then we kind of go into deep dives into different kinds of, you know, like, let's just look at Google News today, and then they kind of search something, or let's just look at some password-protected database that our public library gets, um, which I know is another topic, Paul. But, you know, um, so then then what they do, though, is they, they dive into those things, and then the question that I ask them is, you know, how useful was that source for that topic? And so hopefully they start to understand that different mm-hmm. things are better for different topics, or at least that's what most of them seem to think. Um, but, um, I mean... So how, that, how do you think you and Joe could get this together? And... Part of it is just knowing the different kind of flow and style, right? Right. But, but I also keep wondering, okay, yeah, Chris and Joe could get it together, but how could we make this transparent enough so that other people could join you too, right? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So part of it, I think, 
Um, one of the things you had our websites on the bottom of our class pages last year, which mm -hmm. I'm assuming I haven't checked recently because I haven't done my class page yet. Um, I'm still... Um, I had a couple of wonky things happen with some of them um, where they actually were able to log in, make a post, and then it didn't. The post didn't associate with their account on three different ones, which is weird. But anyway, they went back and just created a, the account and copied and pasted this thing that was supposedly posted by an anonymous person. I don't know. I don't know if they really were. I think they were logged in. I'm not in. following you. Where? Are, what are you talking Sorry, I don't know that it's worth pursuing right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, but um, three of them. Oh, had I think this. I think I know what happened. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just a, a glitch, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. we can talk about that later. So, what uh, can uh, you can you figure out how you and Joe could so that your kids would recognize what her kids are doing and right? Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Well, I mean, they would recognize it because it sounds really similar. Um, the only thing I think is we could we could see the discussions as they roll on the page if you're posting them tomorrow, Joe, because my students will be, be commenting. Um, so there'll be a good amount of new discussions for them to look at. Um, but what I was going to say is, like, I have to get it together, like, with my student, my uh, school page, uh -huh. and make sure that's a little more transparent who's writing, even to the kids in my own school school. Um, so I don't know, that doesn't really answer your question, Paul, uh, in a more general sense, but I think... So I have some suggestions, if you don't want <laughs> jump in. But I want to hear from Don a little bit first, too. Yeah. Don may be having some lagging problems, but Don, what have you been thinking? And, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I am not jumping in at the same place, but there are two mm -hmm. ways I'm thinking about it. One is, I think, maybe back in June, Paul, we talked about connecting kids around personal narrative writing and I saw like the my name posts and I can definitely jump on board with that and connecting that way if mm -hmm. if maybe it's not all of us connecting but maybe you and I and then the question piece like the the inquiry and all of that I can do I'm just sort of rethinking how to structure it within my American Lit class a little bit um, and when it would fit but it still wouldn't line up with Chris and Joe mm -hmm. Which, by the way, doesn't matter. People can, um, you know, still respond to each other. Hi, Lisa. Right. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that figures, what works out. Sam, can you hear us yet? Yeah, yeah. I had to, oh, there um, you go, you know man. What, you're, um, you're here. Okay. I had to go and get my um, tablet because there's something going on with my, yeah, because had, I had the same issue last week. We don't yeah. want to know. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome. Thanks, 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 yeah. Uh, so here's, so I, I asked you guys to check me, and you didn't check me. So 20 minutes. So we, I want to get to, I want to get to um, how we're going to make this happen. Um, the, so uh, just to address what Don just said, um, I, I really want to push that we use um, uh, missions slash investigations, but missions to make these connections. Because, um, Chris, if you could just, and it really would just be a paragraph, right? You could create a, um, instead of putting it on your own blog or in addition to putting it in your own, put it up as a mission and then like that one period assignment you give. Mm -hmm. um, and then Joe, and then send a link, to, send a note to Joe, say, do you want to revise this? Like if you guys could get that mission together kind of collaboratively, it feels like it could be an interesting thing. I don't think you're right. It's yeah. Because the do is you could list those students' pieces of work. I mean, those students' examples right next to the mission. And then so people can see the piece of work, see what the assignment was that attached to the work, and kind of figure out how to, what this thing is. So, so Joe, does that make, did that make sense at all? Yeah. Yet? So you want me to go make a mission, or you want? Why don't you make a mission? I mean, you've probably written out the assignment, the four sources assignment already, right? It's already all, yeah. So what? Um, I'm, I'm putting it up as a mission, and yep. then, you, and then including samples of the students that have already done that work. Well, once they do it, 
once they do it. Oh, I have some finished. Okay. Oh, you have some finished. There yeah. is there's a there's a field on the mission to fill in. You just start typing the title of the of the student example, and it pops up, and then that become that goes on the left side of the mission. Okay. Right? And then on yes. the student work, the mission appears, right? So it kind of inter interfaces the two of them. Gotcha. So the student has to post what they did first, and then yeah. we'll find the. Okay, got you. Okay. Right. Okay. I mean, that feels okay, like yeah, a nice. useful thing. So, so um, Don mentioned that. I mean, we actually. I think there's only one student who has finished it. So, one, a teacher that I'm a brand new teacher that I'm working with created a really wonderful mission um, around uh, Sandra Cesaranos. Am I saying it? Maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, my name. I mean, yeah. This is an assignment that a lot of people do, but it was. Uh, we we are also done starting with um, personal narrative. Um, starting with. Uh, so we're starting with my name. There's there's an option to go to. So students write about their name. Um, an interesting twist I'll throw in there based on last week's show with um, with Jeremy Dean from um, Genius is that. We actually put that up on Genius, and um, kids can annotate it there on Genius. And we then embedded the story onto the mission, so it's all kind of working together in some way. There isn't a lot of annotation there happening yet. Where is that? So uh, youthvoices.net slash uh, my name. Oh. Um, which, by the way, um, is a very useful thing too. There's a you can change the URL and make it a simple URL for kids to find the assignments, the the missions. Right? Um, should I keep talking or interrupt me? <laughs> so okay. she also so you know on that mission also that she found a recording and put it up in Vimeo. Um, if we can avoid YouTube, that's great because it doesn't work in a lot of schools, right? Um, and uh, so there are steps to follow through and, and make all that. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, so one student posted, you know, and, and then we put that up as an example, and then more more kids are getting that done slowly. Um, but it seems to me like if you could get the four sources and or the you know go on a date, <laughs> go on a date sounds like a um, a really great mission. So could there be an honest question? Let's put it out there. Could there be a mission called "Go on a Date with Four Sources" <laughs> that you? <laughs> I I, that sounds no, uh, like I live in Utah, Paul. That sounds like polygamy. <laughs> Sorry, I live in Utah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay. So interrupt me. So can we make this real, folks? There are two ideas out there, right? But I think I'm trying to push them all around missions for a second. Okay, Chris. Besides joking, talk back to me. <laughs> uh, well. Um, should, should we hear from Sam first? Because I feel like we've been patiently waiting for him yeah. to join us. Um, yeah. So interesting, uh, Paul, you're saying you're doing personal narratives. Yeah, and, and you guys uh, are doing to do that too, right? You're yeah, we're going to be doing it. And we're using uh, Educurious as like this resource platform. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Educurious, but the National Writing Project and the mm -hmm. or the Philadelphia Writing Project has worked with the U School to... Uh, um, Kind of like use that as a source uh, to help support uh, kids where they're going to create personal narratives, but they're eventually going to create like documentaries as well. And so, um, but again, we're still getting kids oriented, and so we're not we're not at the point where we're even starting to do any real writing and development yet. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, these these videos because before they actually do the videos, they're gonna have to come up with a proposal where they're gonna like kind of pitch the idea of your documentary, um, and so I'm definitely look to, um, looking to like so, have other audiences for the kids to share their um, work, even their work in progress. So is Edu Curious a place where they'll be posting the work that they do, or is it a resource for making? Is a, a resource. Uh huh. So is and can you embed the stuff on Youth Voices? Then do you think or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because once the work is developed, we're gonna uh, they'll be putting that in our in, like in our own school platform. But we can also share it out, you know, as long as we have you know permission and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Sounds cool. I mean, you guys are in your third, fourth day, right? Fourth day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in, in a brand new school, so I yeah, get it. So. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations, by the way. You you're almost survived your first week. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right. So where? Oh, okay, so I, 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 one thought I had was that the funny thing about putting um, the, my name into um, Genius was that I started searching just name in Genius. There is a rich vein of um, rap <laughs> literature um, around the word name, right? So one one extension we I was thinking we could do is just have kids find uh, like rap lyrics having to do with name and personal story and narrative that's there. Some of it's like kind of uh, whatever, um, not school appropriate, but um, you know they can manage that. And so that just to say that that that's one of the cool things about Genius is that you can use it for your own personal thing and then. It throws them out into this other world that's, that's kind of exciting. But just to say. Um, there is, um, we did a similar kind of update using Genius um, on a thing called uh, youthvoices.net slash um, naming poems. So uh, there are Swampy Cree naming poems, and kids write um, poems about their names again. Or actually, they make up names. Um, so that's another thing to play with. And then there's a thing called youthvoices.net slash indelible, which talks about indelible moments, right? So, and uh, Sandra Cesaranos is uh, 11 is there, and uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, the story about the subway. I'll think of it in a second. Anyway, so being able to share these resources with each other, talk back to me about how we can, like, beyond what we're doing right now, let each other know these things are there. Um, but I'm really happy if there are two projects, like a research project going, and I'll shut up, I promise, and like this personal narrative thing going. Mm -hmm. Um, Al, do you want to say hello? <laughs> hello, hello. Can can everybody hear me? We can. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hey, I'm I'm just not jumping in. Um, it sounds good. I'm I'm just listening. Happy, happy to be here. Glad I could join. So th the stuff we're doing around the my name stuff uh, is totally appropriate to a fifth grader, by the way. So check oh, it out. Youthvoices.net slash my name. I'll be there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Is anybody anybody thinking about um? Given that rep does a lot of boasting, like doing name boasting kind of things, I'm just curious because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I I sent my kids on Rap Genius this week just to, um put some like show them like some tools we're going to be using, and they really like they really love the site, um, but then when I'm pushing back with some of the rap lyrics where you know the guys are like well, all this boasting, sometimes the boasting is just like really ridiculous anyway to me is really ridiculous but at the same time having I'm thinking like having kids like do name and boasting you know through their names that could be kind of cool for kids. I mean well, I, yeah I think it actually could be really cool but I think also like the boasting in hip-hop I think traditionally you know hip-hop artists or a black man and, and traditionally society does the exact opposite so it's, it's almost like once they are they have reaffirmed their worth that they're able to be successful at something, and I think there's power in that. So mm -hmm. I, 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 it comes off as boasting, but but it's it's like a a, a validation of self worth too. Um, right. And, but what I'm what I'm doing with kids, is I, I I acknowledge the boasting, but I'm pushing back. Uh, you know, I I do the little pushing, and particularly around. Anyway, I just I do a little pushing, and then through that well, pushing. I, I mean, well, and, and, and I, I agree. I, I think a lot of it, you know, boasting and bragging. And I know, like, you know, Taunton is not even allowed in the NFL. Like, grown millionaires can't handle it. But at, but at, at the same time, I know the kids are good at tearing each other down, like, on, on, a, on the spot. Like, they get, mm -hmm. get lots of practice at it. So it just seems like to balance that off a little bit. <laughs> okay, now we're going to have a boasting contest. We're going to practice somebody building themselves up, and all we do is critique how well they put the words together as opposed mm -hmm. to 
the things they're saying, oh, that's not true. Well, true or not, wasn't it clever how I made that rhyme? You know, and just right, kind right, of right. uh, appreciate exactly. the artist, artistry of it. Yeah, most definitely. So, yeah, that, actually, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, I, I was talking with uh, David Pelucas of uh, a staff lounging. And and we're we're both going to start this after school rap club. It's going to kind of be based on on Chris Edmund, you know, hip hop, our pedagogy. But the idea was kind of around the kids making these raps, surrounded around you know whatever it is we're teaching, and then those become the study guides, the, the mixtapes of the study guides for the for, for the level. And, and you really you archiving it, so you can kind of hand that to the next year and kind of you know repurpose the mixtape. And if they can do some boasting or some wordplay around, you know. I always had a writing assignment where my kids would choose an organelle out of the cell. And they would have to tell why their organelle was the most important organelle. So I can already see the parallel with boasting if, if they decided to do it that way. Of course, all of them have to work together. But some of them would say, you know, the mitochondria, the kid because it is, or the nucleus because of that, or whatever. Uh, but, but ultimately, they, they get the point. So that, that, that seems like a cool application of it. Uh, we lost Sam there, but he'll come back. He'll come back, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a tech. So, uh, one of the one of the things, if you haven't figured this out yet, on Genius, um, is that um, you need to apply to become a teacher on Genius, and then you then they'll pretty quickly make you a um, editor, uh, which you know gives you lots of other tools. Um, once the, and if that doesn't happen, let me know and I'll hook you up with Jeremy Dean. But um, and and that'll that will happen within a day. But and and worth and I mention it because to anything that gets put up there or anything that you think would be good for other youth voices, people to, a way for us to connect, a way to make a collection is there are two ways. One way is to make a tag. And there is a tag already. You can go up and edit and make, on top right and make a tag. If you just type, start typing youth voices and go all the way through to youth voices, you'll see there is a page that we can all edit together. So we can start collect. I just collected anything at this point, um, <laughs> just a bunch of things. Uh, and we can start organizing that page. So that's a page that we could take over. We can all edit it. And it's like Wikipedia we can build there, right? Um, and on Youth Voice, this is a members, members home list is a link to that page. Right? So that's one way to get the genius and one way for us to connect. I don't know if that was too fast, but uh, let me say that. Uh, the, other way is, is, <laughs> um, the other way is to create collections on Genius, right? So we could a name boasting collection. Um, and we could all kind of uh, pull, pull together. But what I got to say is that it sounds, what you guys are talking about sounds so much uh, more like what kids want to do and, and allows them to take it over than our, like, my name narrative poem assignment. Like how, and, and that's the goal, right? To move from doing teacher assignment to doing what you really love to do. Um, but I, so that's my two cents. Anybody want to join in here? <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that we were having that conversation a few weeks ago about how we would, how we were all going to be talking about Ferguson, and yeah. um, you know, the all the brown signage and all the I am Mike Brown T-shirts, and I can see where my students is kind of naming is that someone said I forget who I don't know if it was Sam um, or Al, but the reaffirming part of it all, that like what what it means to have a name and like taking a name back um, and then pushing out there. So for mine, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I can see where a name boasting could turn into really ugly situation online. Um, or that you know just because they're still learning how how to like you know I've, I've I was hearing my kids questions today about how they comment, and I was hearing their reactions to the to different posts on YV, and and doing the whole conversation about code switching and how to, you know, invite the dialogue. And these are 12th graders. And so I'm just, I could, but I, if I could tie it into how they're talking about Ferguson and how they're owning it, um, this would be a wonderful exercise to, like, a mission where they could engage in it just to learn how to do a mission, I think. So I'm just, because I'm still going back to where we were before, like, a few minutes ago. 
um, about the mission. Um, because again, I it, 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 well, that's right. That's my two cents about the naming part. Um, I'm just trying to make connections between Sorry. that and what we were talking about before. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> so one other thing I wanted to try to get, and Joe, your students have done Guru Learning, right? And Guru Learning yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. in the past. So Guru Learning, um, and, and by the way, I'm working, <laughs> there was a couple of glitches about, anyway, it doesn't matter. Within a couple of days, your kids' stuff will be up on a Youth Voices library. So gurulearning.org uh, slash pound youth voices takes you to a Youth Voices library, um, and that, that link is also in the, the, in the uh, member home list. Uh, so here's, here's my notion. Let's say um, I have a student, I do have a few students who are looking at police violence, right? They could start, they could start a guru learning collection um, around police violence, let other people know in a post, look, this is what I, the, here are the four sources I've found so far. I put them up in this collection, right? Um, let's look at them together. Um, and, then, and then they would just share the link to that. And, and, and if somebody wanted to, we could, we could help them. You can then, they could then share a collection. Like people could collect together. I, let me just so, add yeah. this. The list that you're suggesting, are, are they... All of these public resources, or would they have to sign into like a convenience account, or or is this just something that's just open where if you Google it, it'll pop up? So Google Learning is you do have to sign in, but you can sign in with a if if you're using Google Apps at all, you can just sign in with Google. Um, so that's that's one possibility, right? So it's an easy login that way, but it is a free open system. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did that answer that? Yeah, well, I was just thinking, like, if, if, because I don't know how shareable they are, whatever, but the whole, you know, the whole back channeling piece with something like Today's Meet or something, where it's not necessarily a Twitter, but it's, it's, it's a place where people could go to and kind of share, and um, you, that's shareable. That, that back channel becomes its own, you know, really like micro blog at that point. Uh, but, but I didn't know if you wanted it to be that open. It, I don't even think it's a log here necessarily required. I hadn't used it in a while, but but originally you could just kind of go on there. If you know where, what the room is, you can join it and post things, but that becomes a shareable thing. So what are you, are you suggesting ways for teachers? So like, well, just like, for example, if there are some things in Google and then there are some things in Rap Genius and there are some things right. on uh, right. Teachers Teaching Teacher, you wanted all those resources to be in one accessible place for anybody. As opposed to somebody opening an account for all of those, they can go to this today's meet back channel and all of this stuff is listed. And they can kind of gravitate to what it is they think will meet their needs. It's wild. Is, what's the source again, though? What, what's the uh, um, what's it called? Today's meet. Today's meet is it's like uh, it's like Twitter, but it's like okay, like if you were at a meeting and you posted the today's meet, it might be today's meet.com slash rap teams, and that means everybody that goes there. Got 140 characters, but you can post links, you can post information, and then that whole today's meet slash, you know, uh, rap genius will have all of that stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can tweet that link, and then everybody goes to that place and get that particular collection. And I think you can even, I, I don't think it's indefinite. You can say, okay, this is just going to last from January 1st to October 3rd, and then you, you know, you can make them integrate. A week long. That's kind of was like. Sometimes you just need like a, a something like that for today. Yeah, I'll just get something in for tomorrow at midnight so it's not out there. But it was kind of fun, yeah. Oh. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, Don <laughs> or anybody, uh, do we have too many platforms, or can can you help help us think about? Managing this because I have one more to propose, which we've <laughs> talked about before, and then you can answer that. Um, which is now a comment. So, um, and and you know, managing and pulling all these together is, is useful. The idea of now comment though is again, if if a kid find if here here's an article I found, here's my summary of it. But 
I'm way interested in some deep reading happening around these articles too, like, um, and some social reading happening around these articles. So I'm okay. reading. So here's my summary of the article. Here's my summary of the video. I'm, I'm putting it up on Vialogs. Um, I, I just mentioned another one I know, but um, but and here's a link to it. I'm going to annotate it, and I'd like you to annotate it too. So I, I think I'm suggesting that as a, a, almost a pedagogical move more than a technological move, although we need both. Mm -hmm. So push so back. Let's think. I, yeah. Thank you. I have a question about So now comment and genius. Yeah. Are they, they're both places where you can socially annotate. Is that right? There is some overlap there. Having, exp having played with both of them a little bit, I will describe the difference, and then it's really not true. <laughs> but, um, but, but the biggest, uh, like, so when it when a student uh, annotates on Genius, they're encouraged to do it, and to, in third third person, they're so it's building knowledge around this text, right? So it's like like a Wikipedia with the text right in the middle, and then other people can edit your comment. Um, so it, it, it's like that, right? So I, I kind of, I've described it as higher stakes than now comment. Now comment is, makes it more possible for more conversation and discussion, and this is what I think, or I'm confused by this, um, and then people can talk back and forth with each other. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of depends on what, which way you want to go with that. Is that helpful? <laughs> it is about text, like written, Journals or articles or things? Yeah. Or is this about personal writings that you're talking about being able to annotate? And these are texts um, that we okay. find in, in a research process, yeah. Or, or literature, yeah. I mean, well, like, uh, if, if they're public text and we can copy the text and paste it, I mean, I mean, it's almost like a bell and whistle, but like Google Docs has that highlight and comment and feature. For both yeah, but you know what? These, Al, these things work much better. <laughs> okay. We've okay. been there. We've been there. Oh, okay. 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 But but, yeah. but but very similar concept. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It just organizes things better, and yeah. Why? Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. One thing I'd like to get on before we um have to leave is um one of the things that's really important for my students. The thing that really gets them charged. Mm -hmm. is on Youth Voices, when they get these unsolicited comments, they perceive, like, you know, it's not just someone in the class where you say, okay, comment on somebody else's in this room. Or I'll say, you know, comment on somebody else's who's not in this room but who's in our school. You know, like, that's that's one thing. But when they get these comments from these people, like, I think it's all been Joe's classes, right, so far? This year? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, but when they get those, whoever they're from, if they're from someone they don't know from a different place, like that really energizes their writing process. So, if we, you know, like we can, I think all these things like um, now comment and stuff, I think they're amazing and fascinating and I want to do them all. Um, but one of the things for right now that would be good um, is if our students are composing in youth voices that we make sure that they're heard and that people are, are you know, talking about their stuff now. I mean, that, that when they go back to Youth Voices and they see they have comments, it changes the dynamic than um, if they go back and it's the either no comments or just, you know, people they know. So um, that's changed the topic a little bit, but, like, that's really um, one of my I think that's goals. an important reminder. Yep, yep, yep. Keeping it mm -hmm. simple that way is important, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, I can see the value of the common annotation. Um, I'm not sure I'm there yet. I've been dutifully taking notes of all the things I need to spend more time with. But I was even thinking about short stories and um, if there's a common, common um, big questions or big ideas that we're exploring at specific times. And that, that, that fits makes with connect what you've done in your literature class, right? You've done... We somehow lost your video, but that's okay. We still hear you. Keep talking. Can you explain that a little bit? Like you've found big questions and then, and then done literature well, like, around it? I'm just thinking about 
Oh, I'm just thinking about like thematic units. So like if I'm studying Mockingbird, we're looking at to kill a mockingbird, say that we're looking at bigger questions and pulling another text so that no matter what my anchor texts are, we can have conversations around big ideas that are tied to those. And that actually is how one way that I've added in or worked with uh, KQED and civics engagement work. Mm -hmm. And and I Say think be, yeah. the, I, well, I just was thinking those are ways to to integrate some of the annotating conversations to um, and the world events and tying it all in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that, of course, requires a little bit more planning so, along the way. How do you? How are going to do that? How does that connect? Like, how does that? And Chris, you're in that community too, right? I mean, yeah. How does that community connect back to Youth Voices? How can we do that? Hmm. Um, first that of all, I mean, yeah. it's sometimes it's just tangential. Like, so the things that they, uh, you know, let's say, um, you know, their KQED launches something about um, poverty in your community, um, and there's resources. And, and they talk about it there. Um, sometimes I'll see students kind of continue those threads um, just in their inquiry writing on youth voices. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and literally, you know, the students are in both of those places. Um, I think, yeah, I guess that would be the first um, connection. And then the other, I think, is um, Joe, your group in Oakland, I forget the um, the exact name of it with like Mills College in them. The, yeah, EDDA, Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age. Yeah, so I don't know if there's a direct connection there, but it seems like some of the no. people there um, also are in both communities. I could be wrong. No, they are. That's why I get confused. I forget who's in what. <laughs> They're all in the same. They're just all in different bubbles. So. So, Don, as, as I throw one more into the mix, I, I want to also suggest that there is a concept that <laughs> can tie all this together, and it's, it's the concept is, uh, you know, a gathering of small pieces. Um, and, 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 and I think that's... So, there's, there are a couple teachers in New York and probably teachers elsewhere um, who use Goodreads around literature, um, where mm -hmm. kids keep books in Goodreads, and... But there is a really lovely embed code um, in in any review that you write on Goodreads that pops right into um, Youth Voices and then makes a link back to your Goodreads. So finding so I so I guess what I want to suggest is that yeah I know like this list of stuff and all these possible tools can get a little unwieldy. But somehow, if, if we can always try to pull back to the Youth Voices community, that, that's a way to, for us to find each other, um, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe something like today's meet is a way to do that, too, but, yeah. Well, and I would add yeah. Go ahead. Just one more. You know, like my students install some audio on SoundCloud, uh -huh. uh, and I believe, I think... Way blocked in New York City, but go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think um, they've embedded them. I don't know if people have heard them. Though. Yeah. And the thing is also, I mean, the block, I mean, Youth Voices takes MP3s really easily, though. So, I mean, yeah. But if, if yeah, if I see it, I'll just fix it. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not, I'm well, double it, but yeah, go ahead. I'm not overwhelmed by all the different spaces. I'm just mm -hmm. sort of thinking through what are all the pieces that, bring it together and and I think that some of that happens naturally but making sure that we can connect with each other to bring those pieces together is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, um, like, you know, if I do a sequence of, okay, we're going to record um, a book chat or something um, or a, a reading, a dramatic reading from a book on SoundCloud, you know, like that can take me a week of class time and that week of class time is a time where I'm not connecting on youth voices. Um, I, I mean, if I'm not careful, it can turn into something where I take a hiatus. And then, so when I take a hiatus, or my students do, oftentimes um, 
when they come back, you know, um, they haven't been making connections to other students, so then uh, the community kind of, um, yeah, I think it suffers a little bit too. So I have to make conscious decisions to uh, have them still participate and make comments. So a lot of times what I'll do is um, just say, like, you at a minimum have to make a comment this week, even if we're not directly, like, we don't have access to computers, so we can't really work on youth voices in the class. Um, just having a requirement to do a comment. Um, Stay connected then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, there, there have been suggestions, and, and um, it's a total another conversation, but they have begun again, um, and we might get soon around um, like some upgrades around youth voices. And one of the things that would, that would be nice is if kids could follow mm -hmm. each other, right? And there could be notifications of, oh, this kid who's working mm -hmm. on police violence in Oakland just posted something, and uh, you know I'm going to connect. And interoperability between all of these uh, platforms is another thing we, we need to work on. But those, that's kind of all kind of out there thinking theory. Uh, <laughs> So I'll make that my last comment. Uh, we didn't get to Hangouts on air, though. Could So, um, Joe, can you propose, since it was, you brought it up way at the beginning, propose a time when your kids out there in California could get on? Like time yeah. of day? Yeah. Or, or what's the next idea? We could put out a doodle poll or, yeah, how could we I mean, figure I out? I can give you the exact times of day they could do it. Okay. You want that now? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, we'll, let's see what happens. Okay. Um, so my kids could do Google Hangouts on air um, on Mondays, 8.15 to 9.45 on um, Tuesdays. These are Pacific time. These are Pacific times, yeah. Uh, okay, Tuesdays, we'll figure it out. Tuesdays from 9, 9, uh, from 10 o'clock until 11.20. Mm -hmm. Thursday, Thursdays is the same as Mondays. Friday is the same as Tuesday, in terms of time. Um, so Monday was eight fifteen to nine forty five. Yeah. Yeah. Say like eight thirty. You know they can't get up at. I mean, wake be awake at eight fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done lots of and 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 again I want to propose. I've you've seen me propose this already, uh, but that. Maybe not the very first one. Maybe we need to get to say hi. You know, you have you have a soccer field, and we don't even have any. You know, maybe. But but the, but there's something uh, there's something richer we can do. I think if we organize these around a common text. Yes. That's what I want to suggest, okay. right? So that um, so that we kind of see them as Socratic dialogues, or and. And then I would love to see kids take those over. Like, here's a text I want to discuss next week. Um, and, and by text, it could be video, it could be, you know, a song, it could be lots of things. But does that sound okay to do? And, Chris, can you, can you and Joe figure out a time and then others will plug into that? Does that make sense? Yeah, and um, just so you know, I mean, I was literally thinking about printed word on page text when you said I, that. Um, I, I'm I have, good with that, too. But <laughs> I have um, yeah. my students, um, they are like free reading on the side too, so they are reading um, kind of the usual suspects books. You know, I gave them like the list of college, what people sometimes assume students read, you know, if they go to college. Um, it was put together by the college board. Um, so they chose from that list. There's a lot of good books. There's like a hundred to choose from. Mm -hmm. But um, there's some options there that maybe we've got some crossover where people are reading. Um, but that might be one way to do it um, is like so now what I've got is like little book groups in my class where like a lot of kids are reading Catcher in the Rye or um, Slaughterhouse Five or you know um, those kinds of books and so those kids could gravitate to one computer in my room and they could be part of a, a hangout that way um, but you know they're also I'm open to um, other texts as well as like you know just uh, a video, like you know, Digital Nation or something like that. And or I, I by the way, I haven't given up on Ferguson and uh, Michael Brown. And and the, for me, the question that could 
open it up again and then go into detail um, for the students who are there is like how do we how do we prevent another one from happening right which I think is uh, a really good interest you know a, a good essential question um, mm -hmm. so anyway that I'll just throw that in there um, <laughs> to say so uh, final thoughts for tonight though um, Al thanks for joining us do you, hey, what are you glad, thinking listen, yeah. listen I'll all I'm thinking is that I'm just really excited to be a part of, of a group of people that that are thinking about, you know, resourcing each other to, to, to make a positive change. So I'm 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 happy. Because every day isn't like that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like I'm 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 thrilled right now. So cool. I was glad I could jump in and I'll be watching the, the beginning that I missed later because there's a lot of stuff that I've never heard of and I now I'm feeling lost. <laughs> I, I, I did make links to everything on the uh, the uh, Titan pad, but okay. it's all there, and we'll get it. Chris? Yeah, um, just um, I'm making a conscious effort to um, have my kids comment and to get their stuff commented on um, is kind of my takeaway. So to that end, I will um, put up a mission which I think might be like I don't know if there is one like getting started on youth voices or something like that. You've ideas to get started or something like that. Do you have that, Paul? Uh, d d don't worry. If we do, you'll it'll be different. Because Joe, I and think I, go on a date's nice though. Yeah, you know, love your topic and that. <laughs> love your topic. There you go. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think. Wait, you have to love your topic on the first date. No, no. That's why I'm saying if you don't, like you, you still go out. But if you don't fall in love with your topic, then it's time to move on. Okay, got it. I think you should go there. So don't <laughs> okay. worry about it. <laughs> Sounds sexy to me. All right, Don. Starting with students exploring profiles, and then mm -hmm. so they're going to be doing that in the next week, and then then I want to move into the personal narrative writing and I'm going to explore some of those resources that we can put out. They're the ones that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do have one, um, maybe yeah, a very simple question. question. Go for it. Yeah, you mentioned yes. earlier. Yeah. Do, and, and that is, when I look at Youth Voices in the list of all the schools, there are a lot of people on it. So are, people, are a lot of people active that have not been in this space or how do you and so that's one part we, of my we've question. We've dealt with that we've dealt with that in two ways. Joe has put um, I think it's graduation dates next to each student's name. Is that right Joe? Oh my god my page is a mess. I like mess with it and it's like a oh. mess. Okay your intention. Yeah but I put the graduation year next to it. Yeah. Okay so that's one way to kind of judge Don. Um, okay. Another is some people have put asterisks next to active students. That's another way to, okay. to go. Because we don't want to necessarily, we want to be able to find the old work too sometimes. So yeah I don't know right. and that's a, that's a problem we could propose to Karen Fassenpower who couldn't join us tonight but will help us with things like that. But go ahead yeah okay. good question. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, and my second question is, are there other, there are some some schools that are named, are there other active teachers as well? Yeah, uh, we just need to try to keep all that updated and we'll work on it. <laughs> um, okay, I just, and, and how do we, the reason, like, the reason I asked was I'm just trying to navigate. Yeah. Um, yes, that's uh, around community building, and Karen will help me do that, and you all help me do that too. Um, I don't know. Maybe like we need like a list server or a group where if you're a really active teacher, great. But like you know, Al and Sam, I hope you guys join us, but you're not active yet. But somehow identifying that, you know. So do you hear the complication there, Don? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So we'll figure that out. Any other thoughts? Okay. So. You know, that's, just, that's helpful for me to wrap my mind around it. Thank you. Okay, good. Joe, quickly. Any? Uh, I'm gonna make a mission today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's my end. Great. Um. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because um, the point of your uh, can can kids do the four sources and then decide I don't like this topic? It's a pre-research 
piece. So they're, the yeah, they, the okay. most, many of them they're going to throw away because it's just, they're different. So, so you and Chris should make your own missions, and then we'll figure out if they fit together. We'll just see whose one is better. Okay, cool. Is that what I heard? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. on, Chris. Sam. Sam. Missions. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, no I'm, 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 ex I'm excited, uh, and like I say, I'm still trying to uh, get things together. Uh, but man, having that rap genius this week uh, just gave me some really uh, super cool points. So I, I really appreciate being a part of that. And um, I'm, I'm emailing you an introduction of somebody else that might be interested in, um, for a future, um, uh, for a future Google chat. So I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Cool. Great. So, thank you, and and uh, keep us informed about Educurious. We'd um, love to see how that all kind of fits. Yeah, together. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. In fact, yeah, I'm looking at maybe putting up some work also on Digital Is as well. Uh huh. Great. Right. All right. So thank you all. Um, we hey, who, who's going to who's go, who's going to uh, NCTE DC? Joe. We're gonna be on program together here and there, right? <laughs> I think so. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'll see. I'll, I'll see you guys there too. Okay. Um, so great. Um, so thank you all. We meet here every Wednesday night um, uh, as a channel of the World Bridges Network on edtechtalk.com that uh, Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier hooked up uh, several years ago. Uh, thank you all for. Join us and we'll be in touch. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night.